So uh, we are gonna give you an introduction today on how to use MuleSoft uh, and the kind of things that you can do with it. Um, so first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Laura Diaz. I work in Isobar, uh, a company based, is a worldwide, but I'm based in Geneva in Switzerland. I'm a practice lead and I'm also a Salesforce MVP and co-organizer of this kind of events and the developer group leader in Geneva. Um, hello, my name is Julio Fernandez. Uh, I'm a senior applications developer at Designit, which is a UK-based company. But I work remotely from my little office in Seville in Spain. And I'm also a Salesforce MVP, and I organize uh, DreamOle with uh, Laura and some other people. And this is my Twitter handle, just in case you want to get in touch. Uh, so this is our agenda today. We're going to start with uh, justifying why we need integrations. We're going to have a look at the type of integrations you can uh, do with uh, Salesforce. We'll define a little bit what the MuleSoft Any AnyPoint platform is, and we're going to have uh, uh, we're going to run a couple of demos. Uh, so well, if you've been to the keynote, uh, you know that APIs are very important. We live in a world where we have multiple systems, multiple devices and uh, everything is interconnected. Uh, have you worked on integrations in Salesforce before? Yeah, some of you have, yeah, okay. So yeah, mm, its system is really good uh, doing what they do and if you need something from a system, you not necessarily have to implement all of that functionality. You can just call them and get the information you need from them. Uh, integration makes our lives easier. Just think about a taxi ride 20 years ago when you would have to call a taxi, just wait for the taxi to arrive, and uh, tell them where to go, and then just pay in cash. Nowadays, you have all of that power uh, within your uh, fingertips because it's all integrated within your, within your, your phone. Good, so before starting with uh, Muse of one, which kind of integrations we can do, we are gonna tell you very quickly and briefly uh, which kind of integrations you can already do out of the box with Salesforce because there are already some options that you can use. So maybe Muse of is not the best solution for what you can do, you, just for you to know that there are other options. So there are options that are no code integrations like the Salesforce Connect, Heroku Connect, external services wizard and external objects. Then if you need to go farther and your integration is a bit more complex, you can always, of course, write code. And to write code, you can use the REST and SOAP APIs, the Buick APIs, the streaming API, or um, Apex uh, REST endpoints or HTTP callouts. And finally, we have options that are a bit mixed where you need to both write a bit of code and there is also a, a bit of point and click that are the platform events and the, the IoT Explorer. Today, unfortunately, we only have 20 minutes really for this session, so we are not gonna go in details to every single one of those. So if you want to learn more, just go to, to, to Trailhead and you can learn about those. So now, to, you see Max the Mule here, so we are gonna speak about MuleSoft and why MuleSoft is uh, really changing a bit the game on when it, it goes to integration. So the advantage of using MuleSoft is that it's led by what is called the API-led connectivity, which is really you do all your integrations by leading yourself in this API. So you would be building an API first and then you can reuse this API for many other systems or many other uh, moments, right? So what it's going to give you is uh, really to be very, very speed, uh, you can be very quick, you can um, really um, reuse and be efficient on your code so your business or the users are gonna be happier because those integrations that before were very complex now are really uh, easy or a bit, well, not really easy, but might be a bit faster to, to in integrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do we achieve this API-led connectivity uh, with MuleSoft? Uh, the, base, the base of uh, MuleSoft uh, applications are connectors. So uh, MuleSoft provides a number of out-of-the-box connectors and uh, they are uh, components that uh, you can uh, connect to other systems and you have connectors to legacy systems like, uh, well, not legacy, but traditional things like uh, an FTP server or sending an email and uh, you can also use uh, cloud-based solutions like uh, AWS or uh, Salesforce. And uh, when you bundle up uh, these connectors, uh, you build a MuleSoft app, a Mule, a Mule application, 
and uh, the way in which you build, build those applications is by using uh, AnyPoint Studio if you're working with the on-premise solution or uh, the AnyPoint Design Center if you're working with the uh, cloud solution. Uh, another thing you have uh, with MuleSoft is uh, its own uh, the AnyPoint Exchange, which is very similar to uh, the Salesforce App Exchange, where you can load your, uh, the, the applications you've, you've built to share them with uh, other members of your team, or just to publish them for other people to be available, and so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. Good, so uh, the kind of applications or the kind of uh, most common uh, things we can do with any, actually any kind of integration is what is called ETL, that actually stands for extract. You would be extracting some information from a system, you could then transform it, you could do some, uh, you can do filtering, merging, you can do aggregation, you can um, like um, change the format of a date, for instance, and then do transformations, and then you could be loading this resulting uh, thing that you've been doing, these uh, operations, you could be loading them into another system. This is what is called ETL, and is the most common thing that any kind of integration could do, okay? So that is the same concept we also have with Microsoft. Okay, so now it's time for demo. So we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be doing a demo on the on-premise, uh, with the on-premise solution by, by MuleSoft. And uh, let me show you the, the AnyPoint Studio. So for those of you who are familiar with Eclipse, this is a very similar um, environment. You have your project and you have uh, all your metadata there. And uh, let's think about, uh, let's uh, build the scenario. So this is, uh, oh. Sorry, it's, uh, it's a bit challenging for Julio, who's yeah, used not, to uh, <laughs> Windows, and it's also like Swiss uh, keyboard. I'm not a Mac <laughs> user, so. <laughs> really complicated. <laughs> uh, hold on. Accounts. There yeah, so yes. let's, uh, the scenario is a company who have a legacy system who wants to integrate their accounts with uh, Salesforce, but they cannot uh, send any, any request, any callouts or anything. They cannot integrate through a, a REST API. All they can do is generate a CSV with uh, the information for, for their accounts. So if we go back here, we have uh, a CSV with information about uh, accounts. So we have... Uh, the account name, the, the, the location, the, the, the country, and the revenue. So what we want to do is to get the information from that CSV that is produced by the legacy system and uh, send it to, to Salesforce. Uh, so... I don't know what you've done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to run my job in the, oh, in the background. And this is starting. Uh, this is starting the server in in Good. my local machine. So this is running. This is running the the Mule application in uh, in this machine. And uh, I'm going to go through the different connectors that that I've used. Uh, the first one is the scheduler. So this means that this job is going to be executed every 30 seconds. So all you have to do is just add the connector and uh, configure the parameters. So you just say that it's th every 30 seconds this is going to be run. And what we're going to do is start by reading the CSV. So because the CSV is going to be in the same machine where the app is running, uh, you just tell it where it's, where it's going to read uh, the data from and uh, you just define the type of data. MuleSoft provides a good way of just extracting the data in the format uh, just by telling it what file it's going to read. So it gives you the column. So you can see that we have the same columns as uh, we had in, in the CSV. We're also, we're also just logging the information that we're processing. And uh, we're going to be adding uh, an exchange rate to, to the amounts. So we want to transform the input, uh, the input amount into the Salesforce, uh, the Salesforce currency. We've done this just by setting a constant value, but we could be retrieving this value from a live uh, API system for, 
um, for exchange rates. And this is, this is the main, this is the core component, this is the core connector. This is where you transform the data and where you map your input into your output. If you see, we have uh, on, the on the right hand side, uh, we have the, the typical uh, field names for an account. So we have the name, the type, the billing state. How did we get that? So we got that by using the, mm, the Salesforce connector. So we've told, we've told uh, this connector that it's going to be uh, logged into our Salesforce instance. So, so, so we're using uh, our username, the password, and the security token to connect. And that has, uh, uh, by, by doing that, we can retrieve the, the, the schema of, of the account. And that account has uh, an external ID, which is the FTP ID, which is the ID used in the source. And uh, yeah, so we're, what we're doing is just mapping all of the input into the output. But not only that, we're also just transforming. So if you see the annual revenue is multiplied by the exchange rate, and we are going to have uh, all the account names in uppercase. So let me refresh the list of uh, Microsoft accounts. There's nothing there. And uh, this should be running here. And I'm going to yeah, copy this into the file which I'm reading, which is this one. And once I save it, because this is executing, remember, every 30 seconds. So once this is read, it's going to be sent, it's going to be transformed, and then sent to, to Salesforce. And because we're logging their records as well, they appear here in our console. And if I now refresh the list of accounts, it's here. And because we're doing an absurd uh, operation, we can always just add a new one and modify an existing one. Let's change the, the ID so it doesn't fail. So this is going to happen now again every, uh, in the next uh, 30 seconds. But you can see that the account name has been uh, changed into um, uppercase, and uh, the amount has been multiplied by the exchange rate. So that's multiplied by 1.25. And if we go back to the list of accounts, we now have uh, the new one and the updated one. So we've done, we've just proven that we've done an absurd, uh, an absurd um, operation there. And that's the end of the on-premise demo. Good, so Julio was using for this one a uh, desktop application, the AnyPoint Studio that you can download is for free. Uh, in this other demo, what I'm gonna use is the cloud-based solution. It's gonna be a really easy demo where you can see how quick and easy is to do integration, even if they are really, really simple. Um, so for that, what I'm going to do is to go to the design center that is the cloud version of AnyPoint Studio. You can go to anypoint.milsoft.com and then there is a place where it says register. They have a 30 days uh, trial period where you can just register and start playing around with, with the data. So in this kind of um, demo, what we've done is um, to try to get information from Salesforce and just post to Slack. It's really, really simple and you're gonna see that. So uh, we came up with a very funny <laughs> story about it. So what we are doing is uh, there is uh, Salesforce dog and Salesforce cat. If you find them in Twitter, they do exist. So that was the fun thing about it. Uh, and we said that since the dogs uh, do wow, and the cats do meow. They cannot understand each other, so they needed Max the mule to really do the translation and the transformation between the, their two messages. That's the funny story, but uh, source, uh, long story short, it just means that uh, we've just taken information from Salesforce and pulled into to Slack, okay? So what I've done here is actually to add a new component that is the Salesforce object connector. In this case, what we are doing actually is also to connect through username and password, and also we are using the token. 
um, or not them or that we, we have. Uh, the other thing that we are doing is that um, this is on a new object creation, so we are not doing an absurd like he was doing. In this case, it's only every time there is a new record, just post to Slack. Um, and we are uh, connecting through a party object. So you see here that if I open, we have all the objects that we have in our, in our um, Salesforce org, and in this case, we just took the party object. Um, in the uh, other one, what we are doing is just running this every 10 seconds. When you are doing this, be careful because the limits are run very quickly, so put like a bit uh, number. Uh, but there is also options of milliseconds or microseconds, etc. That depends on your, on your needs. Um, once we have done that, really, it's just take everything that is the input, the party object, we are just posting to Slack. So uh, the connector to Slack is also really easy. The only probably a bit more complicated thing that you can need to do is to have a token connection from Slack, and you can just Google it how, how to do it. It's really simple. It's, there is a page where you click on a button, and it gives you this token that is really, really uh, long. So once you've done that, you paste it, you test the connection to make sure that it's working well. Uh, you see test successful, and it's good. And the second part is like, okay, so now we are having information coming from Salesforce. We select the channel or what we want to do in, in Salesforce. So we have a channel that is called Salesforce cat pa uh, party list. Um, and we are going to put the message. So let me, for instance, take this one out. So let me take it out. Okay, deleting. So I show you how easy it is to put new things. So we've uh, um, written party warning, new party in. What we want to do here, you see that there is all the fields coming from Salesforce. We just take the name of the party, and we just drag and drop. That is not something we, you can do in the other one, in the on-premise, so that is a bit more uh, user-friendly. And what we are doing here is also to put it to uppercase, right? Uh, you could also do like more complex thing. That's just an, uh, an example. Just by clicking here on convert to expression, you can do a bit more of code, really, to get that into more complex uh, integrations, okay, or more complex uh, lo um, logic. And then what we just do, uh, this confetti ball, we don't know if it's gonna work. We are gonna give it a try. <laughs> And we are just putting the location where the party is happening and the party date and time. That again, there are fields that appear here, okay? That they are coming from from Salesforce. So if I go to the object parties, you see I'm gonna just test it very quickly. I just click on new. Ah, uh, yes, I need to run it. Yes, thank you, Julio. <laughs> very good. So I need to run it. Uh, run it. Uh, now it's running. So it's listening to Salesforce every 10 seconds. When it says uh, it's running, come on, preparing to test. Vamos. There we go. So now it's running. And when I go to Salesforce, you just see that I have a list of parties. I'm going to create a new object. And I'm going to say this is the party French, French that's streaming. That is happening in Paris. And it's happening today, really. Uh, so that is the message from Salesforce doc. doc. We just post it. And in a second, we should get a message in Slack. There you go. So that's the cat uh, channel, <laughs> Slack channel. And you see that there is a party warning. And the name of the, of the party has been set in uppercase that we set, OK? And the confetti ball didn't work. No. Uh. Fail. <laughs> Good. So um, you see it's uh, really simple. We didn't want to go a bit farther because in 20 minutes we don't have much more time. But the possibilities are really infinite to work with this. So um, how can you get learning? Because it doesn't stop here, and I guess that you would be a bit more curious to know and try it yourself. You can just, uh, there are a few uh, blogs um, that you can learn uh, from Salesforce. that are the Getting Started with MuleSoft and a Quick Start Guide for Salesforce Developers on, on MuleSoft. And there is also some badges and super badges, like uh, by the moment we did that, uh, there were only those two, but now there are many more. And you can, as I said before, download and create an account in the Nippon platform free trial that you just go to developer.musoft.com or any point platform.musoft.com and you can just register it for 30 days. If the 30 days expire, you create another one. <laughs> That's okay. And there yeah. is also in some of the cities, in some uh, places, there are meetups also like the ones that there are for Salesforce. There are meetups also for, for Musoft that you can attend and speak to other people about, about it. So that's actually about it. Thank you so much for coming. And if you have any questions, please, uh, we are happy to reply any. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's not a rumor. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, well, as, <laughs> as Laura said, we've, we've used the, the free uh, versions, both of the on-premise and the, the online uh, versions. The functionality is shown to you and you can use it. You can get a feel for what it does. You can test it all. But yeah, it's not a rumor. I, I, I don't know exactly uh, how much it is. I don't know either, but I, I heard, yes, it's expensive. So if I could be you, I would really analyze what is your case and the kind of capabilities that you need and how complex is your integrations because there are other solutions that are a bit less expensive, uh, like talent or any other thing that some of, most of the times they can also do just the, the, the work. So if the, the complexity is too much and also think about how many times you're gonna have to reuse what you've built. Uh, if you build an API for a system and you need to reuse it like maybe 10 times, go for Musoft because the, the amount of time and effort that it's gonna save you is gonna be worth the money you are spending on that. If it's a one-time thing, maybe it's not the right tool, right? Any other questions? What? So, uh, yes, please go, go for it. <laughs> Sorry? So, uh, for instance, in my, uh, my colleagues in my company, they are doing an integration that is very complex and where they are using Microsoft, uh, where it's in an integration between Salesforce, um, uh, other systems like our, uh, um, it's uh, for a company called Laura Star, they do very expensive iron <laughs> uh, that costs like 2,000 um, euros. So uh, where this iron is also connected through IoT and Salesforce and they do all these integrations that is marketing cloud, Salesforce, IoT, um, uh, what else, uh, like service cloud, sales cloud, many, many things, and it all is interconnected, and even SAP, it all is even interconnected through uh, Microsoft. So I would say for this case, which is really, really complex, doing that with other tools, that could be too cumbersome. But in, in this case, that was a very, very cool Yeah, and uh, a, a big problem of integration projects is always data quality, hmm. and uh, where you get the data from. So uh, I think it's very important that you have ownership, or at least direct ac access to where the data lives, because if you depend on other people just providing you the data, uh, it's never gonna be the exact same format in which you need it. So yeah, I think that's, that's one of my uh, top tips when you, when you do integration. Try and get access to the uh, data itself and not have uh, in, intermediate steps. Good, so thank you so much. Hope you liked it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.